The Sahara, one of the hottest and driest regions on Earth, receives an above average amount of sunlight. So why don't we use it to generate energy? What exactly is stopping us from covering the entire Sahara with solar panels to meet the world's energy needs? Let's look at the figures first. The Sahara covers an area of over 9.2 million square kilometers. That's roughly the size of the entire United States. If you do some theoretical math, we wouldn't need anywhere near that much space to meet the world's energy needs. In one year, humanity consumes around 27 terawatts of electrical energy. Assuming that one square meter of solar panels in the Sahara generates between 2,000 and 3,000 kilowatt hours of energy per year, an area of just 65,000 square kilometers would be enough to cover the world's energy needs. This corresponds to a square of only 254 kilometers. Compared to the enormous 9.2 million square kilometers that the Sahara covers, it is actually only a small patch of solar panels in the Sahara that we would need for our energy requirements. So, what's the problem? In absolute terms, 65,000 square kilometers completely covered with solar panels is still a lot. Implementing such a project would cause astronomical costs. Assuming that one square meter of solar panels costs $400, including installation, maintenance, etc., said area would cost about 26 trillion euros. No company, organization, or government has that amount of money. It would therefore require global cooperation between many powerful players. However, with such a sum of money, it is simply extremely unlikely that a deal could be found quickly and easily. But we would also face some ecological problems with our project. The dark solar panels would absorb many times more sunlight than light-colored desert sand normally absorbs. This would significantly increase the surface temperature in the Sahara. The greater the temperature difference between sea and land, the more likely it is to rain on land. Our solar surfaces could therefore lead to vegetation taking over the Sahara and ecosystems in the desert being weakened by the major change. In addition, the harsh climate would also affect our solar panels. PV panels, like cool temperatures, and air temperatures of 110 degrees Fahrenheit are not uncommon in the Sahara. In addition, regular sandstorms would either damage the panels or simply cover them with sand. All this would severely limit the efficiency of the panels, and we would have to expect regular damage and therefore expensive maintenance work. However, it is also important to clarify who gets how much electricity and how to build a power grid that transports the energy efficiently to consumer regions. In theory, both Europe and parts of Africa could benefit from the electricity generated. However, many African countries are confronted with internal problems such as corruption, political instability, and a lack of infrastructure. A fair and sustainable use of energy therefore seems unrealistic under the current political framework conditions. In addition, we could be looking at a clear case of modern colonialism here. Rich European countries are paving over the living space of desert dwellers with solar plants in order to cover their own energy needs. That would basically just be exploitation. So as nice and simple as it may sound, as is so often the case, it is not. Click here for another interesting draw documentary, and hope to see you around.